Good morning. Welcome to Quest Life. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're enjoying your morning. Welcome to Quest Bites. I'm your host, Corinne Cahill. I have traveled underwater in the ocean for today's lesson. Don't worry, I'm in a waterproof capsule with oxygen so I can speak with you today. Today, we are going to be figuring out how whales, polar bears, and even penguins stay warm in the freezing cold ocean. But first, we're going to play Splat the Quapple. I will put 30 seconds on the clock for you to try and find it. Let me know if you're able to spot it in this picture. If you do, great job. About 15 seconds left. The Quapple, of course, is our education logo in the bottom left corner of your screen. About 10 seconds or a little less. Five, let's let more people try and find it. Three, two, one. Were you able to spot it? Yesterday when I put this together, I almost couldn't find it. I forgot where I'd put it, but it's right there in the bottom. Oh, oh, that way, that way. If you found it, great job. If you didn't, no worries. There's always tomorrow. Just make sure you're here right at 930 so that you can have enough time to spot the quapple. So today we're talking about the ocean. The ocean can be a chilly place, but there are many animals who call it home. As you know, how do some of our favorite whales and Arctic mammals, polar bears, seals, penguins, walruses, live in such cold conditions? Well, it has to do with something called blubber. While you and I don't need much of it to survive, those animals definitely do because it is cold. That's why we're going to make our own blubber insulators and we can do that right in our kitchen because we want to see what it's like to have that blubber protection in the cold water. Look at those penguins. So what are you going to need to make your own blubber? You're going to need a large bowl full of icy cold water, four Ziploc bags, vegetable shortening, and a thermometer if you'd like to keep track of the temperatures. And the thermometer told me some pretty cool numbers and we'll, I'll get to that, but you might want to have one of those handy. And I also put a towel down because I don't want water everywhere when I pull my hands out of that bowl. Um, but what is blubber? Well, blubber is fat. The fat molecules in the shortening act like an insulator, just like the blubber or like you putting on a winter coat. Insulation slows the transfer of heat, keeping the whales, polar bears, and penguins and seals warm. It also stores nutrients their body can use when there isn't much food around. So they just build up this big layer of blubber and they can pull from it, pull the nutrients from it so that they don't get too hungry. Now, not all whales and Arctic mammals have the same amount of blubber. This fat can be anywhere from a couple inches to a whole foot of fat. That is crazy. Different species of whales have different amounts of fat, which is why some migrate to warmer water and some do not. The humpback whale here migrates out of cold water, but lives mostly off its blubber until it comes back. They migrate to have babies too, so that their babies can survive in the warmer waters because they wouldn't make it when they're so small in the, so small, in the colder waters. You can see these guys uh, in the Puget Sound on the west coast of Washington in the summer, and then they leave when it gets too cold. The narwhal, beluga, and bowhead whales generally stick around the colder temperatures waters all year long, though. So let's make our own blubber. Let's watch to see how we do this. I took my Ziploc bag, and I put it inside out, and I put it on my hand. Then I'm going to take my spatula, and I'm just going to layer this up with the Crisco shortening, which is all fat. I didn't get a foot of fat on there. I don't even think I got an inch, but I tried my best. You really want to make sure you get a good amount all around your hands so that you can really feel the effects of the blubber. You're going to want to have your parent help you. You want to get both sides. I did not have a parent helping me, so I got fat kind of everywhere. But once you got a good fat layer on there, you can put the other Ziploc bag on the outside and then close the Ziploc around so that it has a it's all together in the back. Then you can kind of move around that fat so it covers your hand pretty fully. And once you do that, I have another double Ziploc bag that I'm gonna put my other hand in so I can feel the difference of the two. I can already tell right when I put it in that the back hand with the fat is a lot warmer than that front hand. And then when I took my thermometer, I found out that that back bag was about 10 degrees warmer 
than the bag without the fat. Isn't that pretty crazy? Just that amount of fat made that big of a difference. You can see my thermometer starting to go down, down, down when I put it in the other bag. And it was cold. 40 degree water is not fun. It's not fun. It's very cold. You can see that when I put my hand in here, the bag kind of contracts on me, the fat, and so it's nice and tight and cozy and warm. What kind of other insulators do you think that you could try with this today that could keep your hand warm? I was thinking maybe putting two little washcloths into my Ziploc bags to see how well that kept me warm. There's lots of things you could try around your house. Just be creative. Make sure you ask your parent before you put anything in the water. <laughs> Well, we hope you learned something today. We'll put the instructions in the comments so that you can make your own blubber gloves at home. I hope you send me your pictures of your blubber gloves that you make and any other insulators that you try in the water. I hope you join us tomorrow because we have a special guest that's going to explain what is going to keep your boat afloat this summer. Until next time, continue onward with your quest for knowledge and thanks for watching.